Hi there, I'm Joseph, and uh, today I'm, uh, I'm in our secret fishing spot that you might have seen last week, and um, I've brought a rod along with me, and in a very, uh, I don't know, foolish or hopeful manner, I've brought along a few things to, uh, to try and do maybe a, maybe a small meal by the, by the riverside. I've got a, uh, a, uh, a nice pan, I've got a plate, some, some fennel, I was hoping to find some fennel along the riverbank here, but, but I can't see any, so, um, so I brought some from home and uh, some bay leaves and that sort of thing. And I thought we'd, um, we'd try and do a catch and cook. But, um, but yeah, I don't know, we'll have to see if I'm, if I'm lucky. I know, um, I know I was here uh, last week and I saw some, um, I saw some nice, I'm talking a bit quieter now because I'm near the river, but I, um, I saw some, um, some nice sized trout in this, in this little pool here. So uh, as, long, as long as anyone hasn't been and, and cleared the pool out, then, um, we should uh, we should be in luck uh, so long as so long as I can catch them. I've got some worms as bait today. We'll uh, we'll see. <laughs> Wish me luck. Oh yeah, here we are. We're going to be fishing just in that spot down there behind that tree, or maybe over on the uh, on the other side of the bank over there. We'll see. See any trout in there at the moment. But I know last week when I looked here there was uh well, it looked like it looked like there was a few small ones and, and at least at least two decent sized ones. I'm talking like like maybe eight ten inch long trout. We'll have to see. There'll be brown trout in this river so let's have a look. Okay, we're all baited up. Now I'm just trying to get up to the up to the top over here without without getting tangled and finding a good place to cast into. Here we go. Little bit, little bit too deep there, it's just going over the top of my wellies. <laughs> there we go. Well, wading, wading back across, you can really feel, really feel the weight of that water trying to pull me down there. <laughs> I'm not sure if you'll be able to make it out on camera or not, but there's
Dad, got one. Okay, I've caught my first fish for the day. It's, uh, it's, it's a nice little brown trout. It's, it's actually not that little, it's a fair size. And um, yeah, it's my first and only fish for the day because um, I'm gonna cook him riverside and there's absolutely no need for me to take more than I can eat. So, uh, so let's go cook him. But, uh, but before I do, we better go call Mariana and tell her not to bother sticking dinner on tonight. <laughs> okay, so we've got all of our ingredients here. We've got this little fellow that we just hooked out of the, out of the river here. We've got some fennel, which I picked up at home, some lemon from Lloyd's Lemon Tree, some bay garlic, some, um, some olive oil from a farm here, some seasoning, and yeah. Now we're going to uh, now we're going to have a riverside supper. him over he only needs about about a good three to four minutes on each side and uh, yeah browns up nicely absolutely beautiful tucking into this trout here and my word it is just ah oh, you, you can't get fresher than that it's absolutely amazing straight out of the river onto the fire into my belly <laughs> now this is what i call absolute perfection to perfection. That is what I call lunch. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, lunch is done and uh, yeah, that's all there is left. <laughs> It was absolutely marvellous, it really, really was absolutely beautiful. Just the best, you know, absolutely the best. And the rest can go back to nature. That can become uh, the next fish's meal. <laughs> and of course, after dinner, you have to, uh, have to wash your plates. The best place for it is right here. Just walking back back home now and i thought i'd show you <laughs> this is what happens when when your boots aren't aren't tall enough or the water's too deep yeah 
I think my uh, my sock and leg have absorbed most of that. <laughs> oh well, back home. Back home we go. Oh yeah, we have had a little break in the weather fortunately and considering I done a hive split the other day and I increased our hive our hives by one from two to now three I'm gonna take advantage of this weather and uh and go up and have a look and see how they're doing. I, I done the split about about four days ago I think five days ago maybe so um so yeah let's go see Let's go see how they are. Hopefully, fingers crossed, they're all doing well. Lots of lots of new bees hatched out, and you know, maybe maybe some honey. Because on uh, on the older two hives, no, sorry, on one of the older hives, I stuck a, a honey super on, and I'm out of breath. <laughs> so hopefully, um, hopefully, there's some honey. Let's have a look. <laughs> Okay, so we've just entered the apiary here, and um, yeah, I'm just looking now at the hive that we uh, made a new split from, and you can see we've got we've got this hive here. This one has two uh, brood boxes, two deeps on, and now has a queen excluder and a honey super. That one looks like it's doing really well. I guess you can probably see all of those bees there. Look at that. <laughs> This hive is not quite as strong as that one, so I didn't put a second deep on it just yet. It's not quite ready. It's it's probably just about ready for it now, but yeah, I reckon uh, I reckon in the next couple of days I'll get uh, I'll get another another deep box popped on there. So that'll be a brood box. So all of the all of the bee eggs will be in there. All of the brood, all of the 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 larvae and everything that'll be in there, and then a queen excluder will go on the top, and then another honey super, and then. That means the queen can't get up through here where she's laying all the eggs, these two boxes, and um, she'll um, she can't fit through that queen excluder, so she can't lay eggs at the top. So that's all pure honey up there. And now we've got this new hive here. So we took some eggs and larvae and capped brood, honey, pollen, and everything from there to here, and have made a third hive. I'm going to check them now. They all look quite quite active. So I guess. Um, I guess a lot of the um, a lot of the brood have hatched, and now they're calling this their new home. And um, yeah, we'll see. I, I guess um, I guess they look good. We've got to see if they're if they're making a new queen. Okay, so let's take a peek in here. See what is what is going on with this new hive. Fingers crossed, they're all good and well and trying to make themselves a queen. Certainly looks looks good, a nice amount of uh, nice amount of bees. I am not I am not an expert with bees. I'm a I'm a complete novice. So if anyone out there is seeing that I'm doing something wrong, please feel free to let me know. But um, and uh, yeah we're going to see how, how the hive's doing. Nothing there as expected. Nothing there. honey frame there there's a fair bit of honey you can see all of that on there gorgeous
trying to be so careful here not to <laughs> not to get any um, any bees. I've just noticed they are making a new queen by the look of it, as I sort of expected. Um, looks like they've, they've got a, a queen a queen cup there. Looks like they're probably making this is all. This is all brood here. And there's some larvae in there. Look like little maggots sort of thing, little bee larvae. So yeah, that's that's the queen. That's the um, that's the egg that they chose there to be their new queen. It's a little bit more lengthy this process doing it like that. Oh, can you see? There's there's three. I can see about three little um, little capped broods there that are that are hatching out. <laughs> Beautiful. So little. I don't know if you can see. There's there's three little three little bees there at least three that uh oh four i've just said another one five yeah <laughs> little bees that are all hatching out so so yeah their first their first day as bees they will hatch out and become so i really want to look in there and see if there is any inside mm, yeah so i'm not sure if you can see inside that queen cell there that's the really big one um they fed royal jelly to an egg there, and they've chose that egg to hatch into their new queen. So I did a, a queenless split here. So that means that I didn't have I didn't have a queen cell or anything to put in here. So I just I just put some eggs over, and the bees were aware that they were queenless, and they picked one themselves. Oh, there's another one there. So. Chances are this is the one that's going to become the queen then, I guess. I think this will become the queen, it's capped off. So yeah. Should be good. Again, this is all capped brood here. Well, we've seen what we needed to see, so we know they're making a new queen now, so that's good. Lots of... Uh, Lots of brood is hatching out. I think we'll call that a day. That looks good to my novice eyes, anyway. Hopefully, there's someone out there watching that is a that's an expert beekeeper, and they can tell me if I'm doing good or not. I, I think I think it's good. It looks good to me. <laughs> but like I say, I am a complete amateur with the bees. So please feel free to tell me what I've done wrong. <laughs> I've been keeping bees since um, since last autumn, so coming on for about I don't know six seven months something like that. And we made a split, like I was saying, from the big strong hive over there because that hive was just so so good it, it can't be that way that hive was just so good so healthy and so strong we, we chose that one to to pass on the genetics to the next hive okay okay you're fine go on bees you're all right there are <laughs> there are five stingers on the GoPro, so I think I'm going to call it a day because I don't want to lose too many bees. hive. It's got two brood boxes here, a queen excluder there to stop the queen coming through, and then a honey super here. So all of this is the honey at the top. I've only just put this in, so I'm not expecting there to be very much honey there. But um, I think I put, I put this in, I put this honey super on maybe maybe a week or so ago. So it's going to, uh, so yeah, I think I put that on about a week or so ago. So it's going to be quite interesting to see um, I hope you can hear the microphone on this through all of this buzzing. <laughs> so it's going to be quite interesting to see if they've actually put any honey in here yet. 
they'll they'll have put something in there, but I don't know. I don't know how much because this is my first ever this is my first ever honey box, so we'll see. <laughs> So we know there is no queen at the top here because of the queen excluder here stopping her from coming through. But if we can just see if there's any honey, hopefully there's some. Nothing, nothing yet. But we did take a split from this hive. So, um, so yeah, we took from this hive and made that third one that we just looked into a minute ago. So, um, so yeah, I guess they haven't... Well, we took some frames out of here and popped them in that one. That means they've still got frames in here that they need to fill up and stuff, I guess, before they move on to making the honey. I was, I was expecting to see some sort of movement up here, but I guess we're already sticking them down with propolis. I just guess it's just not quite full enough downstairs to to start working on the upstairs bit. Okay, that's all we needed to see, I think. I'm really happy. This one is starting to... Um, it's starting to do good. They've definitely started making their own queen. They uh, they are filling up the the, the um, they've started making their own queen. So I'm really I'm really happy about that. I think that's good. So this this third height, I think that's so I think that's about all we needed to see really today. I was only doing a quick little check. I'm not doing a whole hive check. Uh, not a not a hive inspection or anything. I've checked there and um yeah they seem to be doing really good they've already started working on a new queen um yeah that's that's all i was really after today i just wanted to make sure that you know the brood was was hatching out because it's the first split i've ever done before so so i think i'm quite happy with that you can see there's quite a lot of forager bees coming in from uh, the the um the brood that has hatched this one here they haven't started on the honey yet i was expecting there to be some sort of you know drawing out the foundation on the uh, on the comb but but they're not they're not really doing that um but yeah because i did take the split from here so i guess they have to fill up the empty frames here before they before they work on the honey but yeah that's about all we needed to see okay so that's good i'm pleased um they're doing they're doing really well actually that split i was uh I mean, I, I'm such a novice at this. Please, if anyone out there is a bee expert, tell me if, I, if I'm wrong. But I think they're doing really well. I should say I think they are, yeah. <laughs> I think they're doing well. But, um, but yeah, like I say, tell me if I'm, tell me if I'm wrong. But, um, but yeah, it's the first split I've ever done. I'm, I'm happy. I think, I think they're, they're, well, they're definitely, they're making a queen. Um, there's, a, there's a queen cup in there and it's capped off. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a queenless split that I'm doing. So, um, so that means that I didn't have, I didn't have a queen to put in there. I didn't buy one or anything like that. So, um, so I took the, I took the, the eggs from my, from my really strong hive, the one that we just looked in, that was bombarding me with bees. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I, I guess that the genetics will pass on from that hive and, and yeah, that means, um, means we'll continue to have strong, strong hives in the future, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, they haven't started on the honey yet in the uh, in the honey super. Again, that's the first time I've ever I've ever put a honey super on. This is my first first spring keeping bees. But um, but yeah, I was I was expecting a little bit more a little bit a little bit more movement up in the uh, up in the honey super. Um, yeah, I was expecting them to have started drawing out the uh, the wax foundations a bit. But yeah, I took a split, so I guess. I guess the uh, I guess the hive needs to re recover the uh, the frames that I took out and do whatever they do, put more, lay more eggs and stuff, and and gather more honey down below in the brood boxes before before they work on the honey super up top. But I mean that hive has a lot of bees, so, so I think they'll I think they'll get going on that pretty quick. It was it was like literally less less than a week um, when I done that split. So so yeah, 
you might notice I still have my my veil on I can hear there's some buzzing going on to my left here so <laughs> I'm gonna wait till I get well and truly close to the farmhouse before uh, before I start taking this taking this bee suit off they um, they stung the camera a couple of times so I kind of called it called it short a little bit today because I didn't really feel like it was that necessary to be to be pestering them just just for my curiosity's sake but um, but yeah I'm happy the beehives look good <laughs> It is a gorgeous sunny afternoon here. It's early spring. It's the perfect time to get your veggie, your veggie garden growing. And uh, yeah, we're gonna uh, we're gonna go out and buy all the seeds and the uh, and the plugs. Get this ground tilled up, and um, yeah, help on our way to uh, to self sufficiency. So we've got Lloyd on the tractor. He's um, he's tilling up nicely. That's doing good. This is our this is our first till of the season. And um, yeah, I'm not sure if you can see all those bottles over there. You're probably wondering what on earth what on earth I'm growing bottles for. Well, <laughs> what they are is my uh, my neighbours. They brought me round all these little tomato plants. Hopefully you can hopefully you can see them in there. So they brought me all these tomato plants, and um, yeah, they brought me all these bottles and said, pop the uh, pop the uh, the bottles over the top of the plants, and um, yeah, acts as a little a little poly tunnel for them, and uh, yeah, <laughs> gets them all gets them all growing nicely. We've got Mitz here. Hey Mitz, what are you doing? <laughs> and a few chickens roaming around behind her. <laughs> She's a good dog. Yeah, good girl, Mitz. <laughs> the chickens are all interested. They wonder what's going on. <laughs> Eager for a few worms, I think. The ground here, the ground in this veg patch, it's just, it's beautifully fertile soil. I, um, I put in all of the, uh, all of the chicken manure, well rotted down chicken manure, uh, the, all of the, some sheep compost, the, the rabbit pellets. Rabbits are, they're absolutely fantastic. They make, they make amazing manure. They really do. Amazing compost. So yeah. Get some things, get some things. Getting some water here in the watering can. Ready to water some of the uh, some of the tomatoes that my that my lovely neighbour gave us. And have a look at this. This is uh, this is how she said the the Portuguese do it. <laughs> you get you get a nice little tomato plant, and you pop one of these five liter bottles round it with the bottom cut off. And it acts as a little poly tunnel while uh, while we still have these cold early spring nights so yeah hey chuk chuk what are you doing <laughs> you come to watch what's going on now Lloyd's just Lloyd's taking the tractor back now he'll probably give us a wave there he goes and there's the wave <laughs> 
it's uh it's starting starting to turn a bit warmer here in central portugal it is uh what is it right now it's uh, it's early may early may the cherries are ready near enough they need about an extra i don't know three four more days some of them a bit longer some of them still need a week or more but um but yeah three four more days and we'll probably start our first pick the idea originally was to do a um a no dig veg patch but um yeah we're not going to do one this year I was expecting to get a lot more a lot more compost than I did and we extended the potato field so a lot of the compost went into there um so yeah so I just I just haven't got enough compost to do it this year but um but we'll still have a fair sized veg patch in here I'm not entirely sure what what I'm going to plant yet um I haven't bought the seeds or anything so I need to go out and do that probably probably tomorrow morning um but I guess I guess we're gonna have obviously we've got these tomatoes here that my that my lovely my lovely neighbour Samuela she gave us. And they're all watered now. <laughs> so um so yeah. So obviously we've got some tomatoes in the ground. I'm not sure on the variety because these are these are just the, the tomatoes that she grew from seeds, so so I'm not too sure on those. So what I'm going to do is is probably have another couple of rows of tomatoes. Um which I will know the variety on. I'm probably going to get, you can get two types of tomato. You can get indeterminate and determinate varieties and obviously many different varieties uh, of, of either. But the, uh, the indeterminate varieties are, um, are, are plants that just give, give like some tomatoes here, some tomatoes there, you know, throughout the year. So you get a little and often supply, which is, which is great if you're, if you're after, you know, selling some eating tomatoes or, or having them for yourself. And then you've got a nice supply that sees you through the season. But the uh, the determinate varieties, they give you um, a bunch of a bunch of uh, tomatoes. So they give most of their crop all in all in. If I can get the gate shut, <laughs> so they give um, the determinate varieties. They give their tomatoes um, all at once, pretty much. So um, so you end up with loads of tomatoes at one at one time, which is fantastic for making sauces and things. Which is, which is what I plan to do, so that's why I'm going to get some more tomatoes, because we've got quite a few tomato plants she's given us here, but yeah, I just don't know what they, I just don't know what variety they are. Indeterminate, determinate, I've no idea, so I'll probably get some determinate varieties here, so I get lots of, lots of uh, lovely big sweet tomatoes towards the end of the, uh, of the summer there, midsummer sort of thing. Um, and, um, and yeah, what else will I do? Good question. I think, I think I'll probably get some, some of these like iron, they're like, I don't know if you call them like cattle panels or something, um, this iron, um, f fencing almost it looks like, you lay it in, in, inside cement and things, so I'm going to buy a couple of those, I've got one sitting over in that tall grass over there, so I need to dig that out, but I've got one over there somewhere and I'll buy a couple more and then I'll bend them over and put them into arches, so they, so they're arches, they'll go here somewhere or down there, because we've got the sun coming in from here, so I'll probably put them that end so that they're so that the shade is going that way and it's not shading out the rest of the veg patch. And uh, I'll probably put some some beans and cucumbers and things along those because I, I, I'd like to um, I'd like to do I love beans anyway, but I'd like to do uh, some some uh, pickles this year. I didn't do any last year, so um, so my supplies are running out. So um, so yeah. And other than that, I'm I'm pretty open for suggestions. Uh, we're going to do the 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 normal the normal sort of things like uh, lettuce and cabbage and all that sort of thing and shortly we're going to um we're going to be getting some um some pigs fingers crossed so um so we we we're, we're going to be um growing quite a lot this year about double as much as we have any other year we've we've extended the the veg patch out here and um yeah so it was it was split right down the middle now we've doubled it so um so a lot of that is going to be um is going to be for the pigs so we can we can start to um start to be a little bit more self-sufficient and um yeah you know grow our own grow our own food as as uh, as much as we as much as we possibly can but yeah let's see how that goes next is the planting mm -hmm. 